<laughs> it's going to be a cold winter. Yeah, it's cold been pulling down here already. Winter. Yeah. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the cave. It's me, Joe Reezy, and making the return. We got Abra and PQ. Hey, <laughs> hello, hello. And before we introduce our special guest, who's also making his return to the cave, I just want to make sure you guys check out our sponsors at safelightcandle.com. If you need lighting for your home, workspace, or studio, go to safelightcandle.com. And check us out at cave.com. That's k4v3.com. And making his return to the cave, Anderson Silver. Welcome back. We're glad to have you back. And our first episode with you was such a tool for me personally. You know what? I listen to that episode sometimes when I'm mad, when I'm, you know what I mean? When I'm too overwhelmed with emotion sometimes, or when my lower self has, has taken the, the, the better side of me. So thank you for the knowledge and the tools you passed down to the caveman. The first episode. Welcome back to the second episode. <laughs> wow. What an intro, man. Who the hell am I to uh, hey. in- inspire? <laughs> You're Anderson, Anderson Silver, Silver, man. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. Good to see you guys. How you all Silva. been? Silva's retired. It's yeah, silver so, now. Silva's it's silver now. I was trying to conquer the physical world. I'm the one trying to conquer the, uh, conquer the <laughs> mental one. There you go. How you guys been? Been good. Oh, it's been great. You know, just staying yeah, grinding, great. trying to find balance between everything. But yeah, how about for yourself? Same, man. Isn't that the description of the, the human condition nowadays? Just try to find balance, some type of sanity, and uh, one foot in front of the other. You know right. what? I have to say for october since you know i said it's getting cold now and it's gonna be a cold winter it's november right now just to put a time stamp on this episode in october we went and did a rabbit hole you know what i mean like like spooky content october type of vibe and we went down some rabbit holes that were kind of dark and you know what i mean hard to put and leave behind in october you know what i mean <laughs> some of those Rabbit holes and research kind of shattered my worldviews and my perspectives to where it's now still kind of relevant. And, you know, the current event that's going on right now, everything's crazy. And I'm sure we all have some personal stuff that's going on that's, you know what I mean, not up to par. But like I said, stoicism is that key and that tool, I feel like, that keeps us afloat on that metaphorical surfboard when... You know what I mean? Life throws these waves at you. So, yeah, it's uh, at least for me, you know, uh, just for anyone who has, doesn't know me, stoicism is just the answer I have found uh, to life, or rather, how to live a peaceful life, how to sleep well at most nights, you know, how to uh, not be so angry at uh, the world or myself, and, and how to not act on my emotions in general. So, um, the framework worked for me. Uh, how does it help me today any more than it helped me last time we spoke before the whole world was at war? Uh, same, no different. One moment at a time, <clears throat> rational mind in the moment. Um, are, are there more externals that are challenging me nowadays than before? Maybe. Uh, or maybe, it, you know, they're just a little bit more uh, headline grabbing, you know, every day we have challenges we deal with just sometimes some of them we get a little bit more emotionally attached to and we, uh, you know, lose our minds over it. But at the end of the day, it's an external. It's happening. We can't change the world. We can only change our opinion. So, hey, man, let me take a chill pill and uh, change my opinion of this matter. Yeah, something that um, I kind of thought about as we were preparing for this episode is this kind of ironic how when you're trying to go through like self-improvement or you notice that there's things that um, you want to change for the better, uh, a lot of like the philosophies you'll come across are like they align with stoicism. So, um, you know, so perfectly it's like, it's, and it's almost like you'll, you'll stumble upon it even if you didn't intend to when you're on that journey. Yeah. I, I hear that so often, you know, when, when people say, okay, so what is stoicism? Give me examples. And I say, well, here's one example. Yeah. 
hey, I've been doing that my whole life. Give me another example. Well, how about this, that, and the other? Yeah, I've been doing a few of those. Well, I guess I've been a stoic my whole life and I didn't know it. Uh, here's the thing though, stoicism isn't like, um, you know, it's not an answer uh, to all your questions. It's not a solution to all your problems. It is simply going to help you be the best you possible in the moment. So the the best that you're doing now is the best that already existed in you. You're just giving yourself the capacity to be more of that and less of the one that you regret, less of the one that, you know, later on when you get home in the privacy of your own home, you're like, oh, why did I say that? Like, why did I have to die on that hill? God fucking damn it. Um, you know, that's all it is. So I think that's why we have that instinct to say, oh, yeah, hey, like it speaks to us. Like, yeah, I've been stoic. I've been stoic. Well, no, you've been great. Stoicism maybe just helps you be great more often. Right, right. So your book, your user's manual is hilariously appropriate because it's like an operating system, right? We're, we're machines and it's the program that you run that, you know what I mean, dictates your behaviors and your decision making. Is stoicism the ideal operating system for humans? Do you think like it's a default? It seems kind of like when you boil it down, you know what I mean? The, like you said, Pat the core of everything ends up being stoicism, right? After you, after all, you take off all the bells and whistles and all the, all the flashy stuff's gone. Right. Like, it's so, so ironic. Takes, right. The minimal, but like, yeah. Yeah. As far as an operating system go, is that the ideal operating system? Do you guys think like what other operating systems are there in contention of stoicism? Uh, I mean, good question. Look, Let's let's take a step back. If um, if you've read any of my work, one of the things I get the readers to recognize is that there's something more within us. You know, even if you're an atheist, I would I used to be. Hey, there it is. Yeah, and actually, hey, flash it. Oh, yeah, flash it. This right. There you go. Hey. Oh, there you go. Uh, there you go. Um, your dichotomy <laughs> of control. Yeah, it's the perfect one. Um, so is it the ideal operating system? Um. It is for me. Uh, it made sense for me. It's one of many answers to life. So look, the something more within us, sorry, I, I was going down that rabbit hole. Uh, mm -hmm. Even if you're an atheist, um, which I used to be, here's a simple mental exercise you can do. Uh, you look in the mirror and you see yourself and you refer to yourself <laughs> as me, correct? We all do this. You see me. Now, rewind the clock 10 years ago when we were much younger and you looked different. Maybe you had different facial hair, maybe your uh, physique was different, and you looked in the mirror and you called yourself me, right? Mm -hmm. Now, fast forward five, 10 years into the future, maybe you have glasses, maybe you have a pacemaker, maybe you've had an accident and you're missing your right arm. Uh, even though you look different, you're going to look in the mirror and you're going to say, this is me. So clearly we associate ourselves with something more than the physical. So instinctively, we know that there's something more. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think this makes sense to a lot of people. Right? And so it, let's call this something more the spirit, whether you want to call it consciousness, whether you want to call it a soul, whether you want to call it whatever, a tomato now. <laughs> um, and then let's say tending to this tomato, let's call it tomatoism or a spiritualism. Um, that is what we are sorely lacking spiritualism. We need to tend to the something more. And whether that spiritualism is uh, religion in its most extreme form, which is not bad. You know, I have an issue with the institutions. I am very openly anti-theist, but I have nothing against religion. Um, I, in fact, in my, uh, one of the books I'm working on in tandem presently, uh, on my sixth one, I'm writing about how uh, all philosophies, religion, science, uh, all of these different answers for what, uh, how to tend to the spirituality or tomatoism, uh, is in the middle of it all is this of the Venn diagram is this pearl that joins them all together. And as you gentlemen have touched on so succinctly, stoicism seems to reflect those ideas that's at the core of each one of these. So it almost seems to be a distal form of what one should do to mm -hmm. not be awesome, just minimize the shittiness that we inherently create because uh, a basis of stoicism is to accept uh, our starting point is we're all shitty include you know we are all shitty including yours truly 
uh, but against our will, we can be better. And so with that uh, framework, we try to strive to be better in very basic ways. And I think that's why you find it in any kind of uh, a belief system that helps tend to this spirituality because, um, you know, it's it's everything you need without the pageantry, in my opinion, which is why it appeals to me. I'm just lazy. I want to get to the crux of the problem. You know what I mean? No pageantry necessary. <laughs> Bare bones, yeah. Yeah, and that's the kind of... <clears throat> That um, brings to attention. So I, uh, in addition to the, so I haven't written your dichotomy yet, but on Audible, I have your user's manual. So chapter three, you're not special. That is like speaks like volumes, I think, in every aspect of life, because um, as the four of us all do, we're, you know, we're, we're all uh, full-time workers and, you know, we spend the majority of our time at work. And um, I think, you know, when we, when we realize that we, you know, you are not special, you know, you're, you, you have to get that, um, you know, pre pretty much get your head out of your ass and then things start kind of unfolding for you. You, you, you're brought back down to earth, you're humbled and, uh, you're more willing to put in the work. And, um, I don't know, it just, overall, it changes your attitude and how you approach people. Uh, you're more accepting, and I don't, do you guys agree with what, with, uh, with that? I think <clears throat> like you, you feel oh, there's, there's a, there's a lot of mental chatter that goes on. And like we said, like once it boils down to anything, like stoicism happens. So like, as far as the operating system question I asked, there's also like, you know, a religious operating system, right. And whatever, yeah. whatever behaviors come with that. But, after the bells and whistles, like you, you break down to deity and, and it's kind of stoic principles as well, just kind of weaved into it, like in a coded, you know what I mean, written way. So from from those principles, you can extrapolate a lot of parables too, you know what I mean? That can mean different things to different people and it hits, right. you know what I mean? Just just as intense and as appropriate. So I would say so. It's just a matter of how you get there. You know what I mean? Like I said, there's yeah. also the conspiracy mindset. You know what I mean? Like, but we were going on a rabbit hole. But at the end of the day, there's when you boil boil that down, you you stick on that path for long enough, you end up becoming stoic as well. You know what I mean? You end up accepting that all this bullshit's happening and it's okay. I'm just kind of do what I got to do. You know, instead of Oh man, they're all out to get me. What? What? Why even live anymore? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which sometimes, you got, which sometimes you got to go through in order to be like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Different things will come up and hit us differently at different parts of our journey. Mm -hmm. um, it just, it just kind of depends on where you are in that path, right? That's right. very well. But and it's cyclical too. You know, we like to believe that we evolve in some type of linear fashion. And it's like, oh, I've gone through that phase. I'm not gonna go back to that phase. Oh, I'm yeah. 42 years old. <laughs> yeah. I'm stoic over a decade. I can confirm beyond the shadow of a doubt, you know, you go through the cycle. And 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 they're not like over 10 years. We're human beings. We're all the same. Um, yeah. we all have emotions. We all have uh, we're living in a world where the externals necessitate our software to go beyond what our hardware is capable of doing. So, um, yeah, you know, like tough times, tough times. Uh, I wanted to touch up on the conspiracy thing though, quickly, if I may. Yes. Um, I love conspiracy theories and that's how I ended up, uh, you know, forming a friendship with, uh, Juan. Yeah. Uh, it was my first, uh, <laughs> interview. Uh, <laughs> we met each other actually in the obscure holes of, uh, black holes of Reddit somewhere. Oh, um, okay. Because as a Stoic, one thing I preach is, and you know what, in today's times, this is so important because everyone's screaming with facts. And uh, we have become machines that make arguments um, for their own perspective. In other words, we're arguing a position. We're not trying to learn and better our position, mm -hmm. um, which to me is a, is a, you know, a losing gambit. Um, but uh, uh, people get stuck with their certain view and they don't want to hear anything else. So what I preach to uh, anyone who listen, my kids, uh, uh, you know, Anderson Nation is many truths exist in parallel. 
yes, you're right. You may be upset. Perhaps you're coming to some conclusions that you shouldn't jump to, but you're the facts that you're throwing out there and that you're upset over, they're true. However, it doesn't change the fact that there are other people with other facts that are upset, uh, you know, that there's other truths that exist in parallel. So to bring me back to conspiracies, what I love about conspiracy theories is it's so-called fringe, right? But it's still a potential truth. It's mm -hmm. a truth that exists in parallel, rather. Uh, and, and, you know, some conspiracy theories do end up being the truth. But many years later, it comes out that, yeah, this, in fact, was true. Hey, man, we actually got this one right. Um, but anyways, that was just my two cents on conspiracy theories. So I think we should keep talking about them. Yeah, and it also, like, this brings up an interesting topic, too, that a friend and I were talking about. Do you think conspiracy theories or theorists have the right environment to get you? Because, you know, and then we talked about stoicism kind of being like the base form once you shave everything down. You think that conspiracy theorist environment kind of shaves you down quicker to that stoic mindset? You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, some would argue martial arts would also get you faster over there but just constantly breaking your worldview and knowing that a lot of this uh, these realities that people base their 100 percent energy on you know what i mean could be changing like everything's changing like the truth is always changing you know what i mean yeah, sometimes definitely. overnight which is right. crazy like if an alien came down like christianity will be baffled you know what i mean like wait, wait that wasn't in the fucking book you know what yeah. i mean so like, do you think that mindset and that environment kind of gets you to that, you know, stoic mindset? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I get the question. I mean, look, I think it depends on the individual because conspiracy theorists also, you have to be somewhat of a uh, paranoid. You have to think outside the box and think uh, you have to try and connect the dots and you can't really go out there and try and connect obscure mm -hmm. dots to, to try and make a narrative if you're not a little paranoid. Uh, yeah. On the other hand, if you're constantly exposed to uh, crazy crap, just on your day-to-day, -day, things is not going to drive you as crazy anymore. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, Frederick Nietzsche, famously, he wished the worst upon his friends and family because he believed, he truly believed that every bad event in his life made him better when he came out on the other side. He's like, yeah, it sucks in the moment. Yeah, cool. But anything that doesn't kill me makes me stronger. And as I come out on the other end, I'm a better, uh, more capable, more resilient human being. I realize a little bit more, hey, this doesn't matter. This too shall pass. Like, whatever. I'm still here. And um, yeah, I don't know if that makes any sense. Yeah, it, it totally does. Yeah, it really does. And it's kind of, uh, it's uh, it's one of those things. It's like, uh, for you know, nobody likes it when, when bad shit happens at all. You know, some shit happens terribly and you know it breaks your heart it, it, and it you know changes you permanently but like you said i mean a, a, lot, a lot of times it makes the individual a better person and um that's just one of those things where it's like uh you know it's just like back in like sports you know when when a team's going through hell week it's like the the most dreaded thing that they're you know they they're, they're going through for that season but it's preparing them, you know, for, for the real thing. Yeah. And you bring up a good point. If I can actually, uh, touch on that, you said it, it, to clarify rather bad shit doesn't make someone better automatically. Yeah, uh, okay. you look at what's happening in Gaza for every parent that's killed, that's a child that's probably going to, you know, get recruited into Hamas because they're going to want to retaliate. And then that's just continuing and escalating the process. Right. <laughs> So yeah. bad shit can make you bad. Um, and I guess this brings us back to having like a framework, any framework that just helps you become a better human bro. Uh, Stoicism offered this for me uh, and it helps me become a better human being through bad events, right? Uh, it, it, right. Just going through tough shit is not going to make you better. It's It'll drive you insane. <laughs> if you don't right. tend to your soul, right? This is why we're all miserable at home at the end of the day, eating fucking carb sugar and watching Duck Dynasty or whatever I have you because we want to escape from the world. That's just so fucking mean sometimes, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Interesting conversation I had with a friend was um, trauma, right? If a kid is raised, and you guys can chime in to, to poke holes into this theory. If a kid is raised in an environment where there's not a lot of 
um, you know, counter forces, you know, adversity. Or, or adversity to kind of shape them, he won't develop fully. You know what I mean? And we yeah. we're arguing that there's a certain dosage of trauma that people need to go to go through in order to yeah. be fully developed. Because like we said, too much of it, you know, you go a little crazy, not enough of it. You don't value that experience enough. And we all have different I mean? limits too. Right. Yeah, it's you know that what you're saying it reminds me of this uh, video I saw once where they were uh, they were basically interviewing people who had the option to inherit like um, a lump sum of money that would change their families' lives, mm. and uh, you know surprisingly there were a couple people who were gonna inherit like millions of dollars and they declined. And uh, you know when asked why, a lot of times the the biggest reason was because I don't want my child uh, or my children to um, not have to go through the things that I went through that made me who I am now. Yeah. You know, which I, tends to be what the basic formula is for the kids. Understandably so though, you know? Yeah. And uh, I mean, it's, it's true. Like it's like um, I'm the only, uh, the only um, like example of someone who had like a big, uh, who was extremely we wealthy and kind of, turned out okay is um or was or it turned out okay in the way that they can deal with adversity is not even like a real person <laughs> can you guess who i'm talking about who bruce wayne okay yeah but no i mean that's not realistic but the majority of people in real life you know um He's an they've never had though. to work. Uh, yeah, and when they've never had to work, but, uh, they've never had to earn anything, and they have had everything like you know spoon fed to them. They just uh, even in social settings, like you know they they behave differently, and you know, but it's it's not always the case. Some parents know how to um, you know still inject that adversity or those hard experiences in the upbringing to where they they know how to manage themselves through life, but. Mm -hmm. More often than not, it's not the way. You know, I'll chime in with this too because um, what about if the the child themselves, you know, they they go through too much? It seems like that trauma uh, stays with with the child as they grow to be an adult, and as an adult, things just don't seem to connect as it would with the normal child. If you know what I mean, like I. I don't, like statistics no kind of show that they, there's no guidance, right? Statistics kind of show where, you know, they're the ones that most often get into trouble and things like that, you know? Um, so, I mean, if it's, there's too much, maybe to them, uh, they, they think that, that that's just how the world functions because that's what they see all the time at home. Like just right. uh, disorder, disorderly conduct and, and such. So, I mean, it, I, I see both sides from it, but hopefully somewhere along the road, you know, either new family or it's just someone that could guide them to be better people. Um, someone stoic, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> you know, hashtag, hashtag uh, yeah, I, I, I could see, yeah. I could see hashtag, but like a normal maybe. kid <laughs> where, you know, uh, kind of going back because, you know, PQ and I, we play football like we were really taught about adversity and overcoming it and tough things along the way. And oh, yeah. so those things really do stick to you. But I think if there's too much as a kid, it's like now it just becomes a part of you. It's like who you are. Yeah, it's, it's, it's tough to yeah. get away from that. Definitely. We're very finicky, aren't we? <laughs> We're very finicky, and I'll, oh, yeah. I'll I'll extend the question to you guys. We're talking about childhood, but I'll ask you: Are we any different in our adult life? Yes. Um, are we any less tumultuous? Because um, the way I see it, nature is violent, right? I keep gardens out back. I love I love gardens, and I have blackberry bushes uh, planted next to the raspberries. And every year, I see, depending on the climate, one's fighting more this way, or the other's fighting that way. It's like watching you know Ukraine and Russia go back and forth over a tiny piece of land. <laughs> The way right. I see it, nature is just violent. We are inherently violent. Uh, in philosophy, you know, there's two sides to this. There's two camps. There's John Hobbes that says a man's life is short and violent. And then there is uh, Jean-Jacques Rousseau who says, um, we're not violent. You know, put a child into a room and he, two 
two, three little children, whatever uh, race or sex, they're not going to fight. They're just going to be like, hey, we want to play, you know? Mm -hmm. um, he says civilization mm -hmm. is what makes us violent. Um, in my opinion, it's a little bit of both, right? Uh, nature is violent. We are violent. Uh, civilization pits a lot of us in close proximity together. And, um, you know, whereas up until 200 years ago, religion was a strict code. Uh, for you know whatever fault it had, it was a strict moral code. Uh, now we don't have that code. Uh, you know, uh, God is dead, and we have killed him. Um, and and here we are uh, as adults. Look what we're doing. We're throwing hissy fits, and instead of throwing rocks at each other, we're throwing fucking rockets and uh, <laughs> taking actual lives because of whatever, because of storytelling, because of emotions, uh, nothing else, right? Um, so are we any different as adults? That's my question to you. The uh, the Goo Goo Gaga has just got a little bit more complex, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, um, well, it's and written, and written, written in law. <laughs> when you look into psychology, too, they a lot, a lot of times they talk about your inner child. Uh, so, I mean, I could see where what what makes us different. So, you know. <laughs> we still many of us still carry that inner child within us mm -hmm. yeah and you know i've heard um joe rogan say this a bunch of times it's like you know adults are just big kids and um i think i think a lot of the, th the same things that we felt as children are still with us as adults but uh we're just kind of a more controlled version usually uh we're not we're not you know, we're not oh, going to lash out in the ways that we did as children. But, um, yeah, I mean, we, we are just big kids. You, you know, when you look at, let's say, your parent or someone uh, that had a dream of something or of doing something when they were a kid, they don't lose those thoughts. You know, those things still stick with them. Like if, you're, if your uh, father wanted to be like a professional soccer player or something, you know, just because they had to go down a certain path, it doesn't mean that they forgot about that. And, you know, those things, I think they affect us as adults still. So I w potentially want to be a father. Um, Anderson, are you your father, correct? At least three. <laughs> <laughs> that, you, that you know of. <laughs> I know. So as far as raising your kid, I, I always joke with my wife. I say, we're, we're going to drop our kid off. Our, if it's easy. He, if he's a boy, we're going to drop him off at Dagestan and, you know what I mean, just leave clues into finding his father so we can shape a real man because <laughs> it's that meme or, or that saying that, you know, tough times create tough men and, you know what I mean, peace mm -hmm. create boys, you know, without being disrespectful with, with my adjectives. But as far as raising a kid, I mean, there's obviously that emotional attachment to that and what I love about stoicism is it lets you kind of delve into your proto emotions. Like we talked about in the first episode. Right. But how do you kind of have, there, there's a balance almost right. Of kind of being too into your proto emotions and kind of letting them kind of be independent and, and let them have that environment to become stoic in itself. And I know you said you, you shape their their minds kind of with conversations at dinner tables with different topics and all, and all that how, how how do you go about kind of setting a boundary between stepping in and kind of you know letting them go through a hard time that it would be potent for their for their shaping of their mindset you know right so i mean the, the question essentially is a moral question right uh, do mm -hmm. you let uh the child unfold into a human being or do you mold the individual into the human being you wish them to be correct um you know the previous generation our parents maybe were a little bit more we will mold you and maybe the later generation is a little bit more like be free and see what happens um mm -hmm. is there one that's better than the other it's a question of balance we keep coming back to this word balance that's that's key yeah. um so how do you approach the question so Let's approach it from a philosophical, philosophical perspective. It's a question of morality, and in morality, there's three ways to approach it. The ontology, which is a written set of rules that guide you. Consequentialism, which is where we think about how this might play out. Um, or uh, we use virtue ethics, which is, you know, stoicism is a form of virtue ethics where there is no rules. 
it's ultimately up to the subject who is dealing with the topic at hand in the moment, right? You have to figure this shit out. You cannot cop out and point a finger and say, I did it because of this, it's not my fault. Mm -hmm. um, so deontology, you know, what could we look at? We could look at uh, child, uh, what was it? You know, uh, parent guidebooks or whatever bullshit, what are they called? Uh, <laughs> child raising guidebooks, whatever. There's a ton uh, of them, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you could look at the Bible. Um, the Bible would have been used to raise children. You know, any other ways, uh, uh, old wives' tales, you know, uh, clucking hens uh, in the neighborhood saying, oh, yeah, you got to, is he coughing? Yeah, you got to rub some uh, Vicks on his forehead or whatever bullshit. You know, we, we kind of <laughs> listen to some guide and we say, this is the right way to do it. <clears throat> Uh, consequentialism is the more quote unquote woke way, right? Where you're always like, no, hold on. I have to think, uh, what, what could it be? Let me think for myself. Let me do the research. Let me, uh, 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 try and apply the most fair solution to the problem. Um, but we can't do that all the time either because, uh, sometimes, you know, time doesn't permit you to do the right, uh, research. Um, sometimes you can't always foresee what's going to happen. Um, you might have the best intentions, but we cannot possibly imagine all the variables uh, in an equation when uh, we're trying to make that go, no-go decision, right? I don't know if you guys are familiar with that trolley uh, problem, right? Uh, any of you familiar with the trolley where it's going down? No. Uh, oh, you got you to choose kind of which, which one to sacrifice, either the sun or the greater. Uh, right, so you're going down, yeah, so you're... A, innocent bystander sent by a, this uh, switch that just so happens to be in front of you and there's a train barreling down the railway and it's going to run over five people okay and you see this and the switch says switch rails and you know you can do this but you see that there's one person that's stuck in the rail over here uh, who will die so your choices are in the moment it, watch this thing roll out happen and you kill those five individuals right or rather you watch those five individuals die or you switch the lane to save those five individuals and save that uh, sorry and sacrifice that one person right consequentialism dictates you kill the one to save the five correct right but it's not that simple because if you flip that switch now you have murdered someone you made the choice up until you put your hand on that switch it's happening you're an innocent bystander right and for all you know, that one person that you killed might have cured cancer like next week right? and might have saved a million people. So consequentialism never works um, as, a, as an end all be all. Right. So it, it, uh, which brings me back to your question of, you know, how do we decide to raise? Because when do you step in? How hard do you step in? Um, do, we, do you need to step in? Do you let them just like free bird it, you know, hippy dippy? Mm -hmm. um, I think we can all, all agree that balance is necessary. So the child needs to experience sometimes a little bit of discipline, uh, uh, whatever that discipline may be. Um, sometimes the kid has to like learn for themselves. Like, you want to stick the fork in the uh, socket? All right, you'll be afraid of it soon. Don't you worry. Go ahead. <laughs> right. Um, and I believe, I truly believe, it's up to the parents to decide in the moment. It's not like. Uh, the government shouldn't tell us what we should and shouldn't be doing. Um, uh, a, you know, a, a religious party who's thinking a certain way shouldn't be telling us what we should or shouldn't be doing. Nobody knows our reality, our lives, our problems the way we do. Um, does it mean that we're always going to make the best decision in the moment? No, no. But it should be up to us. And hopefully we're practicing our best judgment in the moment through some type of internal discipline, right? Mm-hmm. Deep. I always have the fear, obviously, because not not being on that path, the anticipation of the path, you know, what I mean, sometimes can get overwhelming. Sometimes it's just better to be doing it instead of anticipating it. But just the possibility of like, what if they don't get stoicism? You know, what I mean? they don't understand the concept. <laughs> it's like they turn into other stuff. You know what I mean? Like, so that's what happens. Do that? I mean, that's what was meant to happen. Mm -hmm. See, in the moment, uh, the, you know, uh, Amor Fadi, that's what's tattooed on my on the inside of my left arm. Second most important thing, it just mm -hmm. what is is what is. I, I fuck, dude. Like, I can't change what is. As much mm -hmm. as I hate it, God, I can scream and kick and break as many toasters <laughs> and punch my, you know, throw as many pieces of drywall as I want. Ah, God, now I got to fix that, dude. Son of a bitch. You know, like, it's not going to change what's happening. Mm -hmm. Um 
I cannot change the event. Uh, I can only change my opinion, right? Um, and that's right. what you got to get back to, no matter what it is, whether it's I just made delicious toast and it fell on into the kitty litter and I can't eat it, or it's <laughs> my kid made a decision that on the surface seems like is really disappointing to me, whatever that may be, right? It's a different thing for different people. Um, but if you take a step back, is is it disappointing? It's what's happening. It's what was meant to happen. Mm -hmm. um, and this is an important point when we do introspective work as well, because this should not be a self-punishing exercise. If we feel a certain way, if you feel some type of way, you feel some type of way. Those are your emotions. That is the reality, and it has to be dealt with in parallel with everything else, right? You can't be fair to others and be unfair to yourself. You have to... Um, in my case, the way I explain it to people is I negotiate with my body and I say, all right, I get it. I get you're pissed. Now is not the time. We're going to deal with this later because you and I can agree uh, this is the uh, uh, at least damaging way out. And I know at the end of the day, we're both going to be thankful for this. Uh, and there we go. I just negotiate. It's quite literally a negotiation. That's my meditation, right? Um yeah, good time to plug in my second book, Your Duality Within. If this kind of shit interests you guys, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, joking aside, the second book is the is the I'm going to say the most impactful because I get a lot of uh, <clears throat> trauma victims um, that reach out to me and say, "Man, this is the first time I'm actually understanding myself. Like it makes sense, right?" Because mm -hmm. in the book, I talk a lot about how we have this. Um, Sometimes this person just takes the over the wheel, and you feel like like you're watching this right, shit happen. Right, you're behind a window. You can't you can't do it. You're like, is this happening? Okay, but you know it's wrong. You know, with every word that's coming out of your mouth, it's getting worse. And for some reason, you short circuit, and you're like, I guess this is the hell I'm dying on. Right, your adrenaline pumps, and you just lean into it. Mm -hmm. um, that feeling to me was the worst feeling in life. It was the absolute worst. And, and trying to get control over that was actually, I, I guess, at the core of the of my pursuit that led me here today. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Ironically, the the fact that when you realize that something's out of control, it kind of gives you a sense of control, right? Um, mm -hmm. That's that's kind of the the ironic thing about that. And I I just had a question, um, in um, in regards to the title of your book because. Um, it's kind of, it's just a bit ironic. So your dichotomy of control and uh, usually dichotomy is used, uh, you know, in uh, reference to like one or, I mean, two or more multiple things. So what was like your idea or your thoughts behind that title when you came up with that? Right. So that follows, you know, the first book um, was just like a general high level, whatever extracts from my journal. Um and then when I realized there's a market for this, I'm going to write more. I decided to write the two next ones together. So the first one first helps identify the duality within, which we, we touched upon in the very beginning, right? It's when you look in the mirror and you see me, it's different than the physical. Um, yeah. So in the second book, we established that difference. And the third one now, we talk about um, uh, control, how you can control and which part controls what. So um, I can pick up this pen right here, let it drop, and I've controlled something, right? Um, I can intend to pick up that pen now and pick it up and drop it again, but I might not make it there. I might have a heart attack. I might have a truck barrel through the wall over here and disrupt the webcast. I might, um, I don't know, for whatever reason, <clears throat> excuse me, even though I intend to pick it up and drop it, I might not be able to. Uh, so the further my intent gets from my brain that's seemingly making the decision of to do or not to do, the more difficult it gets to execute said action, right? So immediately when my intention is outside of my brain and it includes anything to do with my body and externals, it's a little bit delayed. It's a little bit out of my control. There are other variables in the universe that are going to interject. Make sense so far? Yes, definitely. <clears throat> So um, we spend our lives trying to grab the bull by the horn and, and go get life, right? You could do whatever you want and all that other bullshit and nonsense. It's, it's, it's very culty, right? Um, uh, 
we we focus on trying to you know we chase money and titles we chase materials we're always trying to control external things the fucking thermos that you know we lose our shit at the ticket administration because they don't have our, our stuff ready uh, and we lose our shit on that poor clerk who was a human being trying to put food on the table you know what i mean yeah uh, and so i flip the script over you know you, we, it's nice to point at people like this all the time but inevitably there's three fingers pointing back at you right mm. and so what can you control here is you can control you you actually have a lot more control over you than you do over what's happening externally in the situation so um you know the world is a chaotic place yes i cannot change that right i am very uh, uh anti um uh, um violence so a, a a single death you know kills me a little bit inside kills my soul a little bit inside but i can't change this i can't change what's happening around the world um i can only change my opinion on it which is uh, i'm not obviously condoning i'm not like yeah go violence and war no i'm like all right it's happening uh, how can I combat this? I can have conversations. I can help people deal with the anxiety. I can help try and make the world a better place one conversation at a time. Um, th this is how I can handle the situation. I cannot go there and actually stop the bullets from flying. So right, right. by turning my attention to what I can control, I gain immense, tremendous control of my life. And this is where all these quotes you hear start making sense, right? Uh, he who controls themselves controls the world or mm -hmm. uh, stuff like this, right? Right. Yeah, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, that's amazing philosophy. <clears throat> but it's also um, speaks volumes to um, when they say, when you want to make, like, you're part of a team, you want to make a change, you lead by example. And the things that you're that you're doing, other people start to notice it. They start to pick up on it. All of a sudden, that change that you wanted to make is happening right before your eyes. And and um, yeah, it's just that's that was a great explanation. <laughs> you could be like a stoic, like shit talker too, though, right? Like if you just say shit and you don't do it. And you know it, right? You're just like, hey, I know it, man. Don't believe me. <laughs> so this is actually what's called a uh, sophist, right? Um, uh -huh. They've existed since philosophy has, has existed. And just like <laughs> you said it, man, they're snake oil salesmen. They say all the right stuff. Um, like, what's his face there? Um, he, he's on the face of Stoicism. I don't even know his name. But uh, he's he's a sophist, right? He, he uh, gouges oh, people yeah. um, for money. Like when the pandemic hit. Uh, I remember uh, immediately I put all my books for free. I'm like, guys, you know, these are weird times, tough times. Um, mm -hmm. Try and understand yourself a little bit better here. It's free for the next month to download it, download it. Um, and then this guy was like, hey, guys, times are tough. Stoicism can help. Here's my uh, uh, boot camp to help you be a better person for four payments of $25.99. You know, I was like, oh, man, you're going to profiteer now. <laughs> um, <laughs> We but take Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, but here's here's my view on Sophists. At first, I used to be really angry with them. Um, you know, my ancestors, also my teachers fought with them a lot uh, because philosophers were trying to actually change the world, make it better. Um, whereas a Sophist is just trying to profit by parroting, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, uh, some of the good stuff we're trying to say, but often mishmashing it. <laughs> to you know, remixing it to fit what the other person wants to hear. Mm -hmm. um, however, however, virtue signaling, right? We say, oh, virtue signaling, fuck that, it's bullshit. No, no, no. It's true. Virtue signaling is a little low, but it still is out there showing people what can be done. Yeah, it's a little gross in the way it's done, but I'd rather see that than see two people on the street fighting, you know, like World Star and throwing fists and yeah. like. So, oh, yeah. you know, is it so bad in the world that we're living in? I'll take it. I'll take it. Go promote that shit. Is so Sophist can also speak. And how do you, is that S O? Cause that's my first time hearing it. S O yeah, Ryan holiday. That's his name. Sorry. Ryan holiday. He's the most famous, uh, I think stoic these days. And I don't, I don't want to knock the guy. He's a great ambassador in passing the name on, uh, mm -hmm. but like not a stoic by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, to answer Definitely your question, guy. Sophist is a S O P H, whatever, whatever, whatever. S O P H. So that could, because I was thinking almost stoicism can 
just kind of sounds like Buddhism. You know what I mean? It's a, yep. it's a practice almost. You know what Mala I mean? Like, leads right here. There you go. Without There's a huge overlap, yeah. Without really, you know what I mean, having a deity, you could you could say Buddha, but even Buddha was just you say, hey man, I'm just chilling in a tree, and these people started practicing what I practice, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, I, but it feels like the sophists can kind of take aspects of that and kind of make a cult, you know what I mean? Kind of make a religion out of it, you know what I mean? So, is yeah. is that the yin yang? You know what I mean? The kind of negative aspect that. Of of, or almost like almost a realist like a, stoic, you know what I mean? And you know, I'm sorry. I just want to say, it kind of almost reminds me of like a evangelist as well. Like you know the. How dare you? I mean, I mean, I'm just saying for in the idea <laughs> that someone is capitalizing on someone who wants to follow this philosophy or you know the structure um, to improve themselves, but you know, not having the. The so you know the mo the purest intentions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, in terms of the yin yang, you know, there's people with good intentions and there's people with bad intentions. That's just right. that's the way we are, right? Nature is metal. Nature is violent. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of um, a, 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 what tool you use, like cults, you want to start a cult, you gotta be able to attract people. You gotta have some smart shit to say. You can't just walk up in the street and be like, "Hey, you guys, want to come make some jam with me and give up all your belongings?" Like, no, you gotta say some smart shit to at least get them through the door, and then you lock them. You know, you put the some charisma. ankle bracelet on them or whatever they do nowadays. <laughs> um, same with, the, but uh, so they're doing it for attention. For you know, most cults is because it's a sex thing, right? At the end of the day, the guys are trying yeah. to get laid by all the. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's sophists. They just want money in the bank. So evangelists, they're a form of sophists. You're absolutely right, because I, you know, we we see the reports. We see what they're driving. They're not very Christian, right? Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> and part of me being an anti-theist, you know, if we talk about the, and I don't want to, you know, knock any religion, but the institutions, you know. They're profiteering from, uh, let's assume the Bible is preaching some good information and putting good inform uh, good uh, uh, moral codes out there and good information out there. Mm -hmm. Why are these people profiting off of it? Why is there so much gold at the Vatican? Why do they have so, you know what I mean? Like, oh, that yeah. doesn't make sense <laughs> to me. So, Right. This is there's so much irony. <laughs> yeah. So for all of those that are feeding the dark wolf, there's the little guy, the just the, the that you know, you said I'm gonna have kids and what how do I make sense of the world and get them to be a you know good individuals? That's it. Like this is mm -hmm. the yin, this is the uh feeding the white wolf. It's us little guys at home being there when the kids show up. It's it's us parents that's putting food on the table every day. It's a suffering in quiet solitude and, and putting up a strong front for our children to maybe have a better shot. And maybe there'll be better people who will maybe make humanity better in the future. And that's all we can hope for. That's a, that's a tough reality, but that's reality. And hey, I'm okay with that because now at least I have a roadmap that's tangible and attainable. Yeah, It's chaotically beautiful, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of those things I heard this quote, it was like, It's so fucking ugly, it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Life is great, oh, man. Yeah. Like, one thing I can tell you, <laughs> stoicism and age too, I guess, helps with that. And kids has helped me appreciate negative emotions mm -hmm. and m make not make sense of bad times. Like, I'm genuinely. Uh, look, I'm not sure w with uh, whom I was talking uh, yesterday, but I, I got some genuinely tough news. It was yesterday morning, right? And it was fresh. It's 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 work related. Like I have a lot of stuff to process, and I, this wasn't even on my radar. And and one of you guys uh, texted me saying, "Hey, are we on for tomorrow?" I was like, "Oh shit, I forgot about this." And and I was going through the 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 processing the emotions and and you know, there's the guilt. Mm -hmm. You feel responsible. There's the no, I need to process all this stuff, and no, I need to be a dad first. And um, yet here I am. During, during the interview because I realized once I just slowed the fuck down, took a few breaths, I realized what better thing can I do in this moment than talk with three other like-minded individuals, human beings who want to just shoot the shit, uh, exchange good ideas, 
maybe someone's going to listen to this and God forbid they actually like something we say, maybe we change their day to be a little bit more positive. <laughs> uh, they hold the door for someone, that guy lets somebody else in in his lane, so on and so forth. And we've made a tangible difference in the world. So that makes me feel better. And that gets me through the days one step at a time, man. You know what? Like I said, the first episode we had really changed my outlook on life because I worked I worked the night shift, so you know my sleep cycle is way off. I barely sleep, and with that kind of lifestyle, you have a lot on your plate as far as things that you want to do. You know what I mean? And one video that I watch on your YouTube channel, and based on the conversation we had on our first podcast, just asking yourself in the midst of the chaos, you know, and like we said, the cha- it's chaotically beautiful is what do you desire to do, you know? Just answering that simple question really boils down and makes you kind of satisfied with what you've done, you know what I mean? So with me, I've I've told myself, what do I want to do? Just name three things I want to do today and just keep it at that, no matter what happens. If I do four or five things, that's okay, you know what I mean? And that really shifts my sleep at night. You know, I feel like, the way you feel about things and the way you feel about yourself going to sleep is very important in your spiritual hygiene. It's kind of a new term. I I came across spiritual hygiene and I feel like going to sleep thinking, man, I had so much to do that. I could have done this. I could have done that. There's not enough time in the day to, you know what I mean? To do what I want to do. I feel like that's kind of toxic going into, you know what I mean? Meet your higher self as far as dreaming goes, but just, simplifying it to yeah like i know things are shitty right now but what do i want to do i'll go you know i'll go do a podcast and talk with like-minded people to shift my mood instead of yeah sulking in 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 what i'm going through so uh can really shift and it also just kind of making that decision to do that is very courageous and i feel like that's why stoicism gets boil down into kind of like a tough guy aspect, you know what I mean? Because it is yeah. badass to go and do that in the midst of crazy shit, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. I want to just piggyback on that a little bit and say, like, I kind of have found the same thing for myself, but a lot of times it's like doing the stuff that I honestly could, I would you know, rather pass on doing them. Like if I have, like, mm. um, you know, assignment that's due or, you know, have an early uh, morning session with, like, my trainer or something, and it's like, oh, I didn't sleep well last night, but going, you know, just pushing myself to get through that and, you know, knowing that I did it when I'm on the way home, it's just like, feels so much more satisfying. You know, it's definitely feels more accomplished and like, um, you know, like I'm just pushing through a little bit better and trying to get better. Yeah. And you talk about stoicism, like a it's muscle, like- you know, you keep going to the gym sometimes. Yeah, people who go to the gym whenever they want, want <laughs> they're they're not the ones that are in shape, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that so, kind of goes back to that, that spirituality thing, you know. Um, stoicism is working out for your spirit, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we tend to our bodies, we feed it every day. We go to the gym. We're so worried about, you know, some of us are worried about the waistline. Some of us are worried about, you know, the bicep size, whatever it is. We're so constantly worried about where we have hair, where we don't have hair. Um, yeah. Yet we don't spend True. any time on the inside, like none, like none. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Because we're not taught. And no one ever taught this shit to me. Like if somebody in high school or primary school would have said, just take one semester to be like, hey, by the way, you might be thinking this way. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Just help me make sense of the voices inside my head. No, instead, our entire curriculum was how can you be a productive cog in the system? You know, there was no really introspective work in our education system. So, you know, is it any uh, uh, surprise that we are where we are? Now, I'm lucky through a sheer random Amazon algorithm that I ended up on the self re education path uh, that brings me here where I am today. So, you know, um, like for kids, people ask me, would you have kids if you could do it over again? No, because I know I could add more value to the world if I had less distractions. Uh, does that mean I want to redo my life? No way, because there is no way I would think the way I do now if I didn't go through all the steps that I did 
in my life to find that balance. Again, we come to that, right? I had to go through those trials and tribulations to yeah. be who I am. So, um, you know, as we're getting uh, to the end of the hour here, I guess we could sum it up as like, life is beautiful any which way you look at it. Look at it. It's the amalgamation of the experiences that's beautiful. That's what makes life. And as I grow older and I become more stoic, um, you know, shit's breaking down around me and I just find peace. I'm like, yep, yeah, more of the same. It's more changes and more chaos. And, you know, I don't have any immediate concerns. I have food in the fridge. I have a shelter over my head and a beautiful Mustang in the garage. Like I have nothing else to look for. I've, I've got everything. Check, check, check um, until tomorrow morning. And then I'll do it all over again. But for now, um, I, I love the way you said it. You had three goals for the day. You have your mission statement, whether it's one, two or three, and just go back to it. You, you cannot do everything. You don't have to be a superhero. Pick a mission statement for the day, the hour, the half day, whatever works for you. Write it on a post-it. Write it on, with a Sharpie on your arm if you need. In my case, I literally tattooed the ink on my forums. I have two mission statements for life. And keep going back to it. Simplify life. We're not human beings. Uh, sorry, we're human beings. We're not human doings. Stop doing so much. Slow down. Focus on who you want to be. Live life purposefully. Beautiful. Yeah, awesome. So last question before we wrap this up. Yep. yep. Um, you mentioned meditation being very crucial in the practice of stoicism and your form of meditation is journaling, right? I had, a, I had a listener that asked me, like, what do I journal? You know, do I just write what happened down? Like, what are some journaling prompts you could kind of suggest for people that want to start like baby steps kind of, you know what I mean? To get into it. Sure. So um, my next book, book number four is about journaling and only journaling. Cause that is the question I get asked the most. Um, first question is, what do you recommend? If there's one thing you could recommend, what is it? Well, it's a journal because um, we go back to the mission statement. Being the most rational as possible in the present moment because that's the only way we can be our best selves. We cannot possibly prepare for every moment. We cannot you know, read every book to prepare for every test. But I trust myself that if I'm rational in the moment, I can be a good human being. Right? So... Uh, you can draw, you can paint, you can play a musical instrument with muscle memory. Okay. You can even drive with muscle memory, right? You guys ever drive from point A to point B and you just kind of check out uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, muscle memory. You're like, um, how did I get here? <laughs> exactly. Right. Uh, no, not again. Uh, no, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, so the mission statement is to be as rational as possible. And one thing you cannot do with muscle memory is write with a pen on paper. I dare you guys to start writing and try and check out. You can't. Or, I mean, if you really tried to, I suppose you could if you had the right amount of, you know, uh, uh, whiskey or ayahuasca or whatever is your ticket. Um, <laughs> but writing, uh, the point being, writing immediately triggers your rational mind. And that is why it's the most useful and important tool uh, in my bag of tricks, in Stoicism's bag of tricks. Uh, I don't claim that it's going to help everybody. Uh, but shit, man, anyone who's, it's like going to the gym, right? Anyone who does it and goes regularly, they're like, God damn, why didn't I do this before? Why doesn't everybody do this, guys? Come on, guys. Have you heard about this shit where you go to the gym regularly and you feel awesome? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so it's the same thing with the journaling. Uh, so with that out of the way, that's why we should journal and why journaling is important. How do you get into it? Um, first things first, accept that like going to the gym, the beginning is going to suck hard, okay? Um, mm -hmm. I've kept all my journaling from the beginning, and I recommend that people do. Mm -hmm. um, and when I go back to the initial pages, like, like psychopath, man, like, you know, to check me in. There's something seriously <laughs> deranged with this human being. <laughs> I have just pages of pages of where I would write, fuck, 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 fuck. You know what I mean? Sometimes that's all I felt like saying. But the important thing is I started a dialogue. Okay. Hmm. I was first, I was tending for the first time to the most important relationship in my life. And so I kept writing and I kept having that conversation. Uh, some days it was beautiful. Some days I was talking to the journal as if it was a third person. Um, some days it was just fuck, 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 fuck. Uh, and then some days it was like, uh, you guys remember, uh, you know, Marshawn Lynch, I'm here just so I don't get fined. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, I pull out my journal and I write a line. I'm saying, I'm writing this just so I don't get fined as a joke. But oh, I did. Okay. I fucking wrote that day. Like I, I stuck to it. 
And that conversation eventually turns into many things. Now, um, I don't recommend that you pursue one thing or uh, I, I recommend you have a conversation and things develop organically, whether this is a conversation with yourself, with the journal, whatever, whether you like to dictate as if someone's going to read it one day, uh, whatever tickles your fancy. Um, I suggest just, you know, uh, uh, whatever, actually, whatever tickles your fancy. Uh, so w- one thing that you'll do immediately at the beginning is make decisions with it. Because once you realize that you're thinking clearly with your journal, you'll apply it to make decisions naturally. Um, think of it as an elaborate uh, pro-con list. Um, but you would take a little bit more time. It would be a lot more, you know, it would be extensive. Mm-hmm. Um, that's one way. Uh, another way to use the journal would be to track your daily uh, goals, right? What I call your necessities um, or mission statements, uh, those three things that you want to accomplish during the day. Um, I call them necessities because, you know, we tend to our physical necessities. We also have our spiritual necessities. So these are necessary. It's like I have to eat every goddamn day. It's exhausting, but I have to eat. Otherwise, I'm not going to feel well the next day. I know if I don't journal, I'm not going to feel well the next day. Uh, you know, I know some of you gentlemen go to the gym regularly, and I know you know what I mean. If you don't go to the gym, you will not feel well after a few, like, it'll start kicking in. You're going to feel whatever type of a- a- antsy energy, right? right? Yeah, um, yeah. So, and, and this theme repeats itself. Like, we're, human beings, we're not complicated. We are the sum total of what we repeatedly do. You get into a habit of doing something regularly. That becomes you. Uh, that becomes your identity. And the body adjusts to it, right? The the body that we admonish so uh, is actually just a tool. It just does what it's told. And and through programming it and repeating mission statements uh, in your journal, uh, you can get it to default to your mission statements when it's in a panic mode instead of defaulting to anger, which is what I grew up on. Mm-hmm. Because my parents pushed me to compete, compete, compete. So my default mode when I was pushed into the corner was, man, fuck you, and start ad hominem. I die. your mama's so fat when she's in class, she's next to everybody. You know, like that's the type of stuff that we Amen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Amen. Um, so journ- journaling is, uh, it could be used to track uh, your mission statements. Uh, but on a daily basis, you can also use it as a checkbox. So right out in the morning, this is what I want to accomplish. And now you're keeping yourself accountable. Go back at lunch and see which ones that I take off. Okay, I did this one, but not these two. Ah, fine. Now I have to focus on these during the afternoon. And by giving yourself a little bit more accountability and a clear attainable roadmap, um, you give yourself a very good shot of getting to the end of the day and feeling proud. Proud like you got late for the first time or proud like you just accomplished a big task or just, just <laughs> proud. You feel good about yourself instead of like, what did I do wrong? What's going to get me tomorrow? What do I have to worry about? I hate life. Everything sucks. Somebody passed the wine. Right? Yeah. Um, so these are just a few examples, uh, ways in which the journal could help you. There, you know, there's more, more and more. But um, if you get into that organic dialogue, I think you will go where the journal, or rather, you will go with the journal where you naturally need to go. Um because nobody can give you better advice than your rational mind. You know your reality better than anybody else. You know the facts that surround your situation better than anyone else. No one understands your perspective better than you. And nobody can give you better, therefore, nobody can give you better advice than your rational, not emotional, but your rational mind. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Beautiful. Thank you for that. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Does texting count? Like texting journal, you know? Nope, nope. It's into no. paper, old wow. school. Okay. And you know, there's magic. something romantic about that too. Yeah, like yeah. when you write it down, you're like, man, it's like all the old guys used to do back in the yeah, day. Even more, mm-hmm. like if it's in cursive. Yeah, yeah that's no, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> there is a different, like when I write things down, and compared to that's why I ask because I wonder if that study was done too with text texting. But treat yourself. It's a different mm-hmm. phenomena. Treat yourself phenomenon. like get a nice journal. Uh, my journal is nice. I have a pocket one. It's leather. It's nice. It's got little thing. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Like the pages are thicker. Like I pay a little extra for them. Like I don't cheap out for this because good pen. Uh, you know when you go to the sorry. Oh, like a good pen. 
Yeah, good yeah. plan. You know, it's fancy. Yeah. Like, I feel good. It's an activity. I'll make a nice cup of tea. I come right. sit down at the same table. Sometimes just to feel like I'm in the olden days, it's going to sound corny as fuck, but I'll light a candle. And right by the candle, I'm like, just like back in the days and the cat, you know, just whatever <laughs> motivates me. As long as I sit down and motherfucking do what I know I'm supposed to do, write in my journal, start that dialogue, um, check in with myself. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Very good. Anderson Silver. Hey. Thank you for coming on. Where can people find you? You know, Instagram and website. Plug it in. Yeah, it's not easy to find me <laughs> if you want to. Uh, everything <laughs> is on stoicismforabetterlife.com. I'm only active on Instagram, uh, but I do answer questions daily from my followers. Um, uh, you know, join in on the conversation if you want. You can find me, Anderson Silver, author. Uh, but everything, all my contact info, uh, books, podcasts, podcasts are free. There's no ads. Uh, books are fairly cheap. There might or might not be free PDF copies floating around. Help yourself. Uh, just read. Let's, you know, I'll try and be a little bit more rational. Uh, let's try and be a little bit more loving and understanding and forgiving. We're human beings. We're going to hurt each other. Not on purpose because we're stupid apes. Uh, let's just be more forgiving of others. Let's be more forgiving of ourselves. We're going to have stupid emotions and stupid moments. It doesn't mean that we have to fight that battle and die on that hill. Like, it's okay to admit we're wrong, even if it's after a day or two. Like, okay, yeah, I was going through a bad time. That, that, that was wrong. My bad. Here's some donuts. We're good. Cool. So, uh, you know, uh, reach out. If any of this is interesting to you, reach out, join the conversation. Oh, yeah. And awesome. you got. Three books out, right? Your user's manual, duality within, dichotomy of control. That's right. That's right. The fourth, and fourth one coming out? So I'm journal. working on number four, five, and six. Number four is about journaling. Uh, number five is like my new amalgamation of everything. And six is about uh, all philosophies, religion, theologies, how they're uh, sciences, how they're all different and viable options for a guide for life. Uh, but how and why I find stoicism right at the middle of all of them and why people should look into it. Uh, with that said, I haven't worked on them in a year, like full disclosure, because it's got to work. I got to put that bread on the table. So uh, yep. yeah. one day, one day. Yeah. We'll look all forward right. to that. Definitely. It's like Star Wars, the second trilogy. So the saga. <laughs> you guys got to catch up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, if you want to so keep talking about philosophy, self-improvement, current events or sports, join the discord. Link should be on our website. Anderson Silver, thank you so much for coming on. Guys. Thank you, Anderson. It was fun. Until next time. Yeah. Hopefully again soon. À la prochaine. Peace.